welcome everybody. Thanks for taking the time um, to be here today. My name is Joe Recruit and I am a co-chair for this year's Law Student Tax Challenge. Um, my co-chair, Greg, um, was not able to be here, but the third co-chair, Scott, uh, was able to make it today. Um, so he's on the line. There he is. Um, we're looking forward to a really exciting competition this year. Uh, the point of this call is kind of to you know let let you guys hear from you know people who have been involved in past years um, about you know what are the benefits of uh, participating, what can you kind of expect, what are some tips and tricks. Um, that's kind of the purpose of today's call. Uh, introducing some of the folks that you see in front of you. So I don't know if either of them have their cameras on, but on the call we have Genevieve and Haley who are from the ABA. Um, they might have a few administrative details as we get to kind of, you know, the end part of this meeting. Um, but we also have a number of individuals who have been involved with the challenge in the past um, that we'll go ahead and introduce in a moment. Uh, but as a preliminary note, just to kind of, you know, level set, we're not going to be answering really any like substantive questions about, you know, the, the, the problems or anything like that today. Um, if you have those sorts of questions, um, oh, and then see a note from Natalie uh, that she'll be on here shortly. Perfect. Um, if you have those sorts of questions, you know, you can post it on the listserv or reach out to the ABA um, and we can get those answered. But if you have questions that are kind of directed towards the point of this call, right, questions for our the speakers that you know from in a moment, um, feel free to just put those in the chat as we go along. Um, and when we get towards the kind of, you know, audience question portion, uh, we'll go ahead and, you know, pull some of those. So turning to some of the individuals that you know, are here, um, that you're here to hear from today in no particular order. Um, so first we have, who is actually not on camera, um, is Natalie. She said she'll be on camera in a moment. She was a participant um, on last year's first place JD team. Um, we also have, let's see, who do I see? Uh, I see Kathy, who was uh, the coach of last year's first place JD team. Um, I also see Kevin, um, who has been a coach of, I think, a variety of uh, past LLM division problems. I think you have a best written submission under your belt. Um, who else do we have? Uh, I see Eric, um, who has also been a coach uh, for JD divisions, uh, JD division teams, I should say, um, in past years. Um, and I think we're also probably at some point going to uh, see Emmanuel on the line um, who placed in last year's competition, I believe the JD division. Um, I think he was on the second place team right after Natalie. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let everyone who I just kind of introduced, um, introduce themselves. Uh, and during that introduction, everyone, if you could, I would ask you to just kind of give a quick note on what the impact of being involved with the challenge, either as a coach or as a participant, um, and prior years has been with you to kind of kind of kick off the, uh, you know, the this call today. So, Natalie, I see that you're uh, on video. Um, is it OK if we start with you or do you still need to get situated? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's actually going to get kind of loud in my environment in a few minutes. So I'm happy to go first. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yes. So my name is Natalie. I participated in the competition. Um, I thought about doing a submission my 2L year. Uh, I didn't end up finishing it, um, but I competed. 3L, um, and I was fortunate enough to go out to San Francisco uh, with Professor Mandelbaum and my partner, Victor, who super wishes he could be here, but um, I think he's also away. Um, and, uh, sorry, were you gonna say something? No, I wasn't, I think just, yeah, so, so understood, perfect, great to have you here. Um, I think, yeah, just a quick note on what the impact of the challenge was for you. Um, we'll have a couple more targeted questions as we get into it, but just kind of the precursor before we move on to uh, to hear from your coach, Kathy, for an introduction. So I participated in the competition uh, because I wanted to do some kind of moot court or trial team or something, but neither of those really spoke to me. Um, but then I heard about the tax challenge and it seemed like the level of commitment that I was able to take on during law school. Um, and uh, what it led to is uh, I've, totally kind of committed to a career in tax. I'm actually training with PwC right now. Um, and that's something that totally would not have happened uh, had I not participated in the competition. So I think like the greatest way that it impacted me is it opened up a whole new world of um, careers in tax law uh, that I wouldn't have otherwise been exposed to. And it was awesome. Participating in the um, conference was probably my favorite part. And I was also able to attend the annual meeting after. So 
all of that was great. Perfect. Understood. And I also think I, I, I was getting lost in the, uh, the pictures. I also think James, I might've forgotten to introduce you. Um, so we'll let you go ahead and uh, maybe go next if that works for you. Uh, sure. My name is James Jerby and um, we competed last year, Gerardo Martinez, my, uh, uh, my teammate, he's on the call with us. Um, and um, ours was kind of similar to her um, experience for me, myself. Um, it was, it was part of our advocacy requirements and I had done moot court and some mock trial in my undergrad. And so I was trying to just want to do something a little different. And this one was pretty extensive with a paper itself. And so I was really kind of interested in the, in the research and writing aspect of it. And truthfully, I didn't really even anticipate moving past the initial stage and getting invited to San Francisco. So that was just kind of a, a nice little cherry on top and, and the entire experience at the tax law challenge and getting to meet and network with all the people in, in the tax law area was, that uh, was really awesome. Perfect. Great. Thanks for being here. Um, Gerardo, did you want to go ahead and give a quick introduction as well? Sure. So my name is Gerardo Martinez. I was Mr. James Yerby's partner and we were led by professor Eric Reese, who was a, who was an awesome guide and professor throughout law school. Um, never really thought I'd have an interest in tax law until two, three weeks into this class. And then this challenge presented itself. James and I kind of looked at each other like, hey, why don't we give this a go? Let's see what happens. And then we ended up meeting people that know way too much about tax law. Um, but it's been fun. It's been great networking with um, the a everybody involved with the APA. And it was a great opportunity to be able to go out there and represent the University of North Texas in Dallas. Awesome. Perfect. And then I think rounding out our, our final kind of on, on the participant side of things, um, Emmanuel, if you could give a quick intro. Uh, yeah. Hi, my name is Emmanuel Backus. I uh, was a third year law student last year with the University with the Western University College of Law. We were actually required to do the tax challenge as part of our grade and low income taxpayer clinic. And my partner, Logan Wagner, and I were partners in the clinic, and we filed a submission together. And it uh, just happened that we were selected as a semifinalist. We got to go out to San Francisco and compete um, with our uh, coach, Professor Elaine Wilson, who uh, trained us very well. We, we were so prepared. Uh, the opportunities that opened up was amazing. I um, actually started work about three weeks ago at my law firm in Morgantown, West Virginia at Jackson Kelly. And I've been even doing some tax work and then none of that would have really ever been possible without this challenge. Awesome, great. And, and and actually, I think the first question that I'll kind of pose, targeted question that I'll pose to the participants, um, we'll be touching back on that point um, in a second. So that's perfect. Um, but before we do that, just gonna kick it over quickly to the couple of uh, um, previous year coaches that we have on the line. Um, in no particular order, Kathy, you want to go first? Sure. Um, first, Natalie, I haven't seen you since graduation or maybe during the bar. I hope all is going well and I miss you. Um, I have been a professor at Tampa Law School for 24 years, which happens to be the exact number of years the ABA tax challenge has existed. And I actually coached the first winning JB, JD team in the tax challenge. Um, and it represents and many in between, including Natalie and Victor last year. It um, I practiced for 20 years before I came to Temple, and the tax challenge represents to me exactly how I want my students to think about being tax lawyers. I want them to know the law. That's kind of goes without saying, but I want them to understand how to talk to clients and work to cl with clients and with their partners and associates. And um, the tax challenge is really beautifully structured to give them that experience. Excellent. Thanks for being here. I um, guess we'll shoot to Kevin next. Oh, I think you might be on mute. All right, let me try that again. Uh, so name is Kevin Wall. I'm at uh, Boston University Law School. I've been a longtime practitioner and been teaching as an adjunct for about 20 years. Um, I wasn't quite sure of the format, so I actually got some information from students of mine who had been successful. So we've had um, 
an opportunity uh, in a course that I teach uh, for the last eight years, uh, writing and research uh, for tax. And part of the requirements for the LLM students are that they compete in this. They don't have to submit, but they have to prepare uh, the LLM problem. And um, again, it's part of a tax research course. Um, I, as I tell the students, as I did last night, um, I do very, very little. Uh, basically, they they do the work. They, you know, I might be able to point them in the section of codes, uh, code sections, but that's really about it. Um, just um, maybe some uh, maybe some comments that from students of mine who actually have done very, very well. And I'm not sure um, if you track where people come from in terms of backgrounds, but we've had success with students who are remote, absolutely remote, okay, right. uh, don't okay. set foot on campus, Zoom students, as well as live students. And our first success was um, back in New Orleans, the first year I was involved with the program. We had um, a student who was a woman who was a partner in Phoenix, and her partner was a partner in Honolulu. And they worked remotely, uh, completely, never actually met until they went to New Orleans. So, um, Again, I would encourage all students of, of any type, and I've actually reached out and contacted students across our program. Um, I'm putting the arm on some of the JD students to participate um, as I teach a, a finance course in the JD program as well. So looking for that, and I guess just from a, from a, a preparation point of view, what is it that um, we can do? I really try to tell students, as I'm sure Kathy would agree, you know, anticipate the unanticipated. And every year it seems that... Um, Someone comes up with a question that's really kind of out of the blue that throws even some of the experienced uh, attorneys um, a, a little bit off track. Um, and just basically being able to communicate um, with, with each other. And um, one of the things that I found just in terms of the oral arguments, I, I recommend that students try to carry the ball to the extent that they can. Um, in dealing with clients, I, I don't like to see dead time because that seems to give opportunities for judges to ask questions. And if students basically lay out their program or their problem and their solution, um, I think it I think it bodes well. It, it gives the um, you know the judges an, an opportunity to get a sense that these folks know what they're talking about, and also not to basically be under the grill of of questions that uh, in some cases may be. Uh, a little bit unanticipated, but let me let me um, close it with that. I've got a bunch of other things I could say, but um, pass it on to the next uh, faculty member. Perfect. Yeah, and we'll get into a couple of the more, the more targeted questions. I think you touched on a, a few points that are going to be important to mention. Um, but last but certainly not least, I think, uh, Eric, if you give a quick intro, and then we'll dive into some of the targeted questions. Very good. Um, I'm Eric Reese. I had the uh, honor of, of coaching James and, and Gerardo uh, last year. They did a phenomenal job. Um, I've been involved with the competition, I think, four or five years now. I actually was introduced to it by uh, a couple of our students who, who came forward and said, hey, there's this competition. We'd like to participate and start to learn more about it and get involved in it. Um, one of the things I've really valued in it is it is very focused on more of a real world simulated client arrangement. Uh, like some of the other coaches, I was in practice for a number of years before teaching. And it is really nice to see a competition that's oriented around that, oriented around dealing with clients, oriented around maybe sometimes dealing with difficult clients, that the judges do a good job of, of simulating that sometimes. Uh, and that's, that's just been a, a really good experience. I know uh, I've had students participate for several years now and just had a uh, a great time with it. And I think gotten something out of it that they wouldn't have gotten or gotten different things out of it than they would have gotten from, you know, mock trial or moot court or, or some of the other competition opportunities that folks have in law school. So uh, for those of you who are competing, I think you're going to get a, a great experience from this. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, good to have you all here. Um, so as I said, I think that kind of wraps up and, you know, everyone knows who everyone is now. Um, I think the first question that I was hoping to pose was for you know the past participants, um, and it's really kind of a, a question about the impact that the LSTC had on kind of your career or your path or you know what you're what you're planning to do. Um, because I know personally, for me, for example, like uh, when I did the competition, which was longer ago than I care to admit, um, 
you know, th that gave me work product that I was then using in interviews. I was saying, hey, look, I, you know, it was, here's this hobby loss analysis that I did on this, uh, you know, for this horse farm that uh, was in the problem, I think, uh, that we had. Um, so, you know, opening it up, maybe in the same kind of order that we did the intros, kind of what has been the kind of real world impact of your participation in the challenge? So, like, Natalie, you might be first. Yeah, so forgive me if it's a little loud. You got to let me know. Um, You're good. But um, so the summer prior to me participating, again, I didn't have any attention on tax. I had taken maybe two or three tax courses at that point. Um, not that anything other than tax one really contributed to, um, I think, my success in the challenge. Um, but my point is I um, wasn't planning to go in the tax direction. I was exploring business law in general. Um, and participating in the competition really gave me a path or it gave me something that I saw that I could do. It introduced me to transactional law in ways that I got very little exposure to in law school otherwise. Um, and perhaps the most valuable thing that I got out of it were the connections that I made once I had actually arrived at the conference. Yeah. I have like countless um, mentors and coaches that I met through there that I'm still in communication with right now that are giving me kind of career advice and helping me decide where I want to go. Excellent. Excellent. Great. James, uh, any thoughts? For me, mine was very similar. Uh, tax law was not something that I ever considered at all before law school. It's not something, I mean, it couldn't be further in left field for me. And this process just kind of showed me that, you know, like Natalie said, it's not only uh, something that's there, but it's something that I was actually kind of good at and, and actually kind of enjoyed actually doing it. Um, and then uh, after meeting everybody at the at the event that was out there, in order to build my uh, my network and just kind of open me to a world that I never would have explored without it. And so, I mean, I don't know, who knows, I might be a tax lawyer soon, so. Yeah, I think that's kind of a theme that resonates. I mean, it res the only thing I knew heading into law school was that I hated math. Um, and yet here I am as a, as a tax lawyer, which would have been very surprising to me uh, when I was a when I was a 1L maybe. Um, but it's interesting to hear also kind of the practical benefit, and I think you both have highlighted it, of really the networking portion. Um, which isn't, that's kind of a hidden benefit, I think, of the, of the uh, participation in the challenge. Um, Gerardo, any, any additional thoughts? Sure. Yeah. So very similar to what James said, um, just to kind of go off of what he said. Um, I think this experience as a more real life interaction, doing research for something that you might even come across if you are to come practice tax law. I think it equips you with the right tools and it kind of give kinds of kind it gives you the confidence um and the boost to kind of say like you know what I've done this before I know how to research the tax law I mean of course you're not going to come out as a tax professional but I think it equips you with the right tools to get to solutions um and kind of sit at the table with other tax attorneys and you know what you're doing um, so that's kind of what I valued a lot with James. Our research time was, I'd say, fun at this point. Um, and it, it's nice. It's fun learning um, new things and you come equipped with something new and you can sit at the table. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely agree. Um, and I mean, kind of a, a point that you touch on there is kind of the the practical, how, how the sausage gets made, how the competition, you know, is done. And, and Emmanuel, maybe I'll kick it to you to kind of see if you have any thoughts on, you know, were there some things that you did during the course of your work for the competition preparing that, uh, you know, you thought would be, or you thought were especially valuable and you might recommend to kind of future participants? Yeah, um, like I said, uh, we we had to do this part of our tax, low income taxpayer clinic. So, the thing that I found really beneficial was the year before I'd taken two tax classes and had taken taxation of business entities and tax one. Um, the thing that really helped, I think, was that since I, Logan and I were both in clinic while we were doing it, we were able to really get that foothold in the procedural set part of tax, which I think is tax procedure is something that sometimes when we address tax at law schools, on the law school level, sometimes we sometimes forget about like going before the IRS for settlement or something like that. And Logan and I had done that for a semester at that point. And, you know, having that uh, procedural experience looking into tax procedure and practice really, I think, helped us get a foothold in the more practical part of the challenge. So I would recommend 
fresh freshening up on procedure in a lot of ways. Sure. And and as far as logistics, I mean, I think Kevin, you noted some earlier that you, you know, coach teams that were completely remote from each other, you know, they, they weren't able to, you know, sit down in the library in person. Um, James and Gerardo, what was kind of your strategy for, you know, working together, splitting up the research, drafting? Um, you have any practical, you know, points? Uh, and we'll kick it to Natalie after you two about, um, you know, things you might recommend that worked for you. Uh, well, initially, so Gerardo and I got together initially and we just looked over the problem itself. And then we just kind of, I mean, divvied it up as far as, you know, which issues do you want and which ones do I want? And then we kind of went to our separate corners after that and just kind of really researched for weeks and just kind of went through our own process as far as that goes. And then we kind of, we got back together at some point and then we just kind of talked about what our findings were. And then we, uh, we came up with a schedule as far as, you know, what we were going to ad adhere to as we wrote the paper. Um, and then we got back together a couple times during then. And then we had one final session whenever we, we basically merged our two papers together. Um, and then we came out way over what we were supposed to do. So we had a lot of editing that we really had to really had to nail it down. Um, and that ended up, I mean, actually being more of a challenge that I anticipated that it would have been. I mean, like I said, going into it, I didn't know anything about tax law. So I was like, I don't know if I'm going to have 10 pages worth of something to say. You know, and then come to find out there was a whole lot more that I could actually talk about with it, with it than we needed to. So the the review process was a lot more uh, than I anticipated. Um, so we did that. We merged them both together. Um, and then, um, you know, just spent a few days after that, just rereading it and just really kind of condensing it down to what it what it really needed to be and polishing up the language in it. Um, and that was pretty much, I mean, kind of how we went through it. So. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, Natalie, I'm not sure if you have any, you don't necessarily have to have any points. Oh, it seems like you may. Okay. I have a bunch of little tips. <laughs> okay. Um, do it with a friend. Victor and I were friends. It made us getting together a lot easier and a lot more. Um, look at the problem early. I think our answer got so much better, especially in those last two weeks, but just the fact that we'd been thinking about the problem for two months and we were like, we knew the facts, um, forwards and backwards. So the research came along as it came along, but we were prepared from the very beginning to at least start thinking about what we might need to research. Um, I guess that's it. Awesome. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. And um, thinking back to when I did it, I also, you know, kind of, we just, I had a friend who I knew enjoyed the tax classes and we were like, Hey, why don't we just uh, do this? Even though it's adding to kind of a workload that we already have, it could be fun. Um, and it was. Um, okay, great. So awesome. All great points. Um, turning to kind of the coaches on, on the call, uh, for any coach, you know, potential coaches, um, for this coming year that might be watching, you know, can you give some insight into how, I mean, I think we talked a little bit about the why, but how you go about, um, encouraging your students to participate, um, publicizing, is it just, you know, you know, certain students are interested in tax or, you, uh, you know, publishing it more broadly, have some strategies on on how you approach that. Uh, whoever has thoughts can just feel free to speak up. I'll, I'll throw out something. So uh, I think I had mentioned that it is actually part of a class that I teach tax yep. writing and research. So all students and and we actually have um, MSL, which are LLM students who are not JDs. So these could be accountants and CPAs. So they obviously can't participate, but everybody has to submit within the time frame. So there's um, a group of probably 15 or 18 students that are sort of captured. Um, I also teach a class in the JD program. That This is in the LLM program, by the way. I teach a JD class, and um, I sort of start planting the seed of, um, uh, of tax in their mind, and hopefully we'll get one or two, at least one team and maybe two teams out of the JD program. So I do that by talking to other students and I was also able to prevail upon our director to send out a uh, a blast to everyone at uh, orientation so we've got a fairly large LLM program of, of various components remote students zoom students and live students and just uh, inviting them so I just send out an invitation to participate and um, that actually generates uh, a fair amount of interest so, you know, calling the, the, the JDs, uh, it's required, and then just sending a blast out to the extent that one can do it to all all the LLMs. I'll, yeah. 
Yeah, we absolutely send something to all the JD and LLM students. We have an LLM attacks here as well. Um, one of the things that I'm fortunate in having here is a fabulous tax faculty and students who've taken tax one or come here as LLM students get to know the rest of the tax faculty pretty promptly. And the tax faculty here are all big proponents of the program. So they, the, the project. So they talk it up to their students in their classes this year in particular, the LLM questions got an area that I won't describe, but the faculty who've taught those that particular area is, will go out of their way, I think, to talk to students about it. Um, we also remind the JD students that you only have to have taken tax one to be able to do the questions. That I've read this year's question again. The, the challenges here are not beyond tax one. It, there are a lot of other challenges, but the, you, the, the core of taking one semester as a JD student, I think, is, is enough here. Um, and we remind students, lots of students, we joke about it. They come to tax thinking tax is going to be like Brussels sprouts and they'll hate it. Then they take tax one and they actually really like the Brussels sprouts. And all of a sudden, maybe like Natalie and some of the other com competitors, they go, wow, here I am and I'm a 2L and I had no idea I was going to like tax. Or I'm a first semester 3L and I only took one class and I didn't know I was going to like tax. And this is an opportunity to test that interest in tax. Um in addition to taking other classes. So we sell all of those things. We're doing an orientation next Monday for students who are interested. And we've already asked them to take a look at the questions. So that's how we do it. So at, at our school, we actually have a required competition. Um, this competition in particular isn't required, but our students have to do something. Um, and I confirm fairly early on that this competition would qualify. You know, you don't, you, most people honestly satisfy the requirement with mock trial or moot court, but this, this does that too. And that certainly helps, uh, certainly helps generate interest. Um, in addition to advertising the, uh, the competition to my tax students, at my school, I actually also sometimes advertise it to students in other classes too. And that's kind of a, you know, uh, you have to evaluate what what you know for the other coaches. You have to evaluate what what your student body is, is like and and whether there's folks that might attract. But we have um, we have an evening program at our school which attracts a lot of second career people who may have some life experience and you know have have a little more exposure to the tax world than than your average law student might. Um, and and other folks from just different backgrounds that even if they haven't had tax one yet. Um, I, I will talk to them. I'll make sure that I feel like they've got enough of a background to make a, a, a good go at the competition. But uh, I've actually found that to be sometimes a, a fruitful uh, source of competitors too. And, and I've had folks, you know, basically working from life experience and general knowledge who haven't yet taken my tax class who uh, who've been pretty successful at it and put it in generate a good work product. So. There's something to consider too. Understood, and I know we're we're buttoning up against our uh, uh, against the time limit we kind of informally set, but I just want to give you know the, the the prior coaches, you know, another question I think that people on the call, you know, potential coaches might have is how do you are there any you know tips and strategies for approaching the actual nuts and bolts of helping students with this. Because, you know, there's obviously kind of a line to be drawn. Uh, you know, you don't want to be doing the, you know, you can't be doing the the uh, problem yourself and the analysis yourself. And so are there any kind of tips and tricks? And, you know, do you have office hours and let them just come ask you questions? You know, how does that sort of uh, work for each of you? Okay, so I'm a brand new grandmother, as Natalie knows. And one of the first lessons I learned is to bite my tongue and to bite my tongue a lot and to bite my tongue all the time. And in this competition, particularly in the first round before the semifinalists are chosen, the, the coach really can't do a lot. Um, we have tax tours of the library set up with our law school librarian so that students feel like they have a solid grounding in how to do tax research, which is not something that they've necessarily learned in tax one. Um, I talk to the teams I coach about broad. I mean, I can't talk to them about tax law. You guys have all read the instructions. There's a, a There are some really serious limitations. limitations. But I talk to them a lot about audience and who the audience is that they're addressing and what how they should approach describing the tax law to their audiences because there are two pieces of written material here. Um, 
that's what I do before they make the semifinals. Then once we get students who are actually traveling, that gives us the opportunity to do a lot more work with them. But at least going forward, I make sure that they know how to do tax research and um, that they have a really clear sense of who their audiences are. Excellent. So I think one other thing to encourage uh, students to look at are the archives, yeah. you know, and to see um, what's gone on in, in the past. That's, you know, that's a, a great resource. Yeah, I, I, I strongly agree with that. I, I always point my students to the past past year's problem and videos and, and memos. Um, the other thing I'll add, and, and honestly, it's, it's too late for this year, but it's something to keep in mind, maybe if you're involved in this next year. Um, I like to spend a fair amount of time talking about preparing for this competition before the problem's released. Because I feel like if I have a session with my students then, it's, I'm a, lot, it's a lot freer, okay? I can talk about all the secondary sources that are out there. I can talk about methods of research. I can talk about how to approach the kinds of problems you might see without having to stress over, oh, am I saying something I'm not supposed to say? Because the problem hasn't been released yet. So I'm obviously, I'm, you know, by definition, it has to be general advice. Um, and, I, and as part of that, I have, I've, each year I'll usually ask a, a research librarian uh, from our school who has a background in tax to come in and, you know, walk the students through the different resources, you know, run through a hypothetical. If you had this type of issue, how would you, how would you research it? And I just find that that process works pretty well. And, and doing that before the problem's released, again, just takes the stress off everybody because we can just have this free discussion and not have to not have to worry about whether or not we're, we're crossing any lines. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, well, great. I, I don't, I wanna be cognizant of everyone's time. Oh, sorry, we had a... Yeah, one more. Uh, Harry Maring, uh, adjunct professor at UC Law San Francisco, formerly Hastings School of Law. In the last couple of years, um, my uh, teams have uh, made the semifinalist for the written product. And one thing that I tell them is, number one, to read the problem carefully, as Natalie has said, but also that each word in that problem is there for a reason. And it could be a reason that's important, and it could be a red herring. So make sure that you address and think about each of the words in there, because the whoever the authors were, at least for me, that word is in there for a reason. And then secondly, I try to meet, and it's by remote Zoom, with the students once a week, um, just to make sure that they're getting along well, to see if there's any interpersonal relationship issues, um, and just to make sure they're still on track so we can just kind of keep the team running smoothly throughout the process. So those would be my comments. Excellent. Understood. It makes a lot of sense and appreciate it. Um, yeah. And so I think, sorry, we're going a little bit over. Um, so I want to kind of give this opportunity if there is anyone watching who has kind of a targeted question that they wanted to raise, they can raise that. You can raise that in the chat. Um, give a few minutes to do that. And while we're given a couple seconds for that, um, we do want to highlight that this year's competition um, is in LA. So a lot warmer than Milwaukee where I am in February. So, you know, that, that that's uh, maybe a partial uh, motivator. Um, and, you know, even if you're, even if you're not, um, you know, chosen um, to be a semifinalist or something like that, we would still really kind of recommend as a law student, if you can get to those ABA tax section meetings, um, because as has kind of been highlighted today, they have a lot of benefits, the networking, just even kind of being able to go and see what people are talking about, um, what's on people's minds can be really, really beneficial. Um, and I think, let's see, I thought I saw one question come up. Um, oh yeah, is it okay to reach out with questions after the session? Definitely, um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, looks like Natalie is also happy to uh, uh, answer some questions. Um, and you can also reach out to Genevieve um, and we'll be happy to get those answered for you. Um, so seeing no other questions, I think we can kind of draw this to a close. I really appreciate everyone's time, um, especially everyone who kind of took the time to give some insights today. Um, the prior coaches, prior participants uh, means a lot. Really appreciate it. I think the problem this year is kind of a fun one. Um, 
you might recognize some themes in the in the fact pattern from some popular you know culture and uh, i think it'll be good um and really looking forward to it so thanks everyone um and uh, have a good rest of your day